Hi, this is Ed Moten from ERM Performance Tuning, and I'm back with another tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be on the virtual VE tuning. Uh, we're going to go through the scanner part of it, as well as we'll go through some of the editor and how we bring up the uh, virtual VE calculator that we now have. Um, so the very first thing that we need to uh, make sure of is when we're setting up the uh, scanner is, is that we have the right channels selected that are necessary. Um, obviously, we're going to need several um, important parameters, one of them being engine RPM, the other one being intake manifold, air pressure. It, obviously, we're going to need the wideband input to us. In lieu of a wideband error, you could um, use the long-term and short-term uh, fuel trim cells. Uh, which will be the subject of another tutorial, but for today's we're going to be using the wideband. And the wideband we're going to be using is an AEM and it will be set up to AFR, and again you could go to Lambda as well, and that will be the subject of yet another uh, tutorial. Um, you need also make sure that you have your commanded air fuel channel as well, and once you have all of that um, put together, um, you put together your chart similar to the way that you would normally, picking the um, specific parameters. You, basically, you can set them wherever you'd like. In my particular case, I have the error located in one special grouping, and then the map and things, RPMs are scattered throughout. But uh, the most important part now is, is that somehow we need to set up a graph, which would be the old histogram, and that's, uh, that's done fairly simply. Uh, we right click, we open up graphs layout, and what we need to do is we need to create a graph. So in order to create a graph, we're going to hit the little plus sign which says add graph. We're going to hit that, we're going to add a table, and we're going to come down and this is going to be the location of our new table. Um, very first thing that we're going to add would be the parameter, and that would obviously be the error reporting um, parameter that you'd be picking. And in our particular case, we're going to be using the AFR error. Uh, so we right click on that. That is contained in the math um, under Lambda and AFR. The uh, AFR error will be the one that we'll be using. We'll do double click on that. That will bring it up. It will also bring up a label for AFR. And just so you, you know what it is for, you can just add a VE so we know that that, that will be our VE table. Um, most errors I like to use to decimal places, so we'll do that. Um, again, filters can be added to your liking, as well as any cell hits that you might require. Obviously, you want the number of cell hits to be sufficient enough so that the data is stable or not. Uh, as it is error data, it's going to be plus or minus something, so we generally just pick between 20 and 25, so we'll pick 25, we'll plus 25, and for the, for the low, we'll have minus 25. Now we have to set up the axes because we have to uh, take a look to see against the RPM and the map um, you know, where the cells lie in. So we have to assemble this. And we assemble that by virtue of using the uh, editor and going to our program and opening up the file, the virtual VE file, which is an edit, virtual VE, and up pops our specific table, the E table that's used to produce the coefficients. And what we're going to do is we're going to extract the information that we need from this table. Um, so in order to set up the same axis over on the scanner side, we're going to copy the RPM values by putting our cursor in the, in the column axis. We're going to right click. It's going to come down the column. We're going to hit copy labels. We're going to come back to our, um, our chart. Or not. Wrong one, sorry. We're going to come back to our chart. We're going to hit values. We're going to right click. Up pops the paste table. We're going to paste it, and now our labels are in. What we need now to do is pick the parameter. So we're going to basically do the same thing we do all the time. We, and this was RPM, so we're going to select the parameter. We're going to come up to our engine. One of the nice things about the new one is we can click this little gear and it will basically minimize all of the uh, parameters to just what we've got selected within our channels. So using that, and I do like to use the generic sensors, 
we're going to come down, we're going to go to general, we're going to find our engine speed, this is going to be our RPM, we're going to right double click that, and then pop, so we've now set the RPM side. The second axis will be the map, we're going to come back to our editor table, right, we're going to do the same thing on the map side, we're going to go into the column, into the rows rather, we're going to right click, we're going to come down to row axis this time. We're going to copy those labels, right? We're going to come back. We're going to go to our table, the right one this time. <laughs> yeah, basically go into where values are, left click. I'm sorry, right click, paste. In comes the labels. Now we've got to pick up the parameter, pick up the parameter, and the parameter is going to be basically the same thing, right? Click on this to get rid of all the clutter. Uh, now comes a really nice thing. We're going to look, be looking for intake manifold pressure. So if we type in intake, in pops. I'm sorry, it's manifold, isn't it? Yes. Manifold. It's going to come down, and we're going to find in our generic sensors the manifold absolute pressure. We're going to double click on that, and that's going to then set us up for that. So what we've now done is we've set up the parameter that we'll be using for our error, and we've established our um, column axis and our row axis and we should have now a very nice looking table and if we close out of this click over to our VEAFR table voila manifold pressure on the left we got our RPMs on the top and we've actually got our inputs that are coming off of our specific um, log that we're using as our example so that's the way it is. It's pretty simple. Um, thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the forum. Um, and uh, I guess have a great day. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye.